Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Casas. I am a violinist and conductor from Regina, Canada. And uh, one of the questions I get asked often is, is there a difference between conducting a band, an orchestra or a choir? And the short answer is no. And what I mean by that is you wouldn't change your basic technique uh, if you're in front of a band and then if you're in front of an orchestra or if you're in front of a, ba uh, of a choir. Um, if you know about conducting methods, that, that doesn't mean that you will go Elizabeth Green on one and then you will go Saito on the other one and so on and so on and so on. Uh, you will probably use your same basic technique that the one that you know. However, make sure that you know your instruments because different instruments have different attacks and different release and composers will use that advantage to create the acoustic environment that they are looking for. If you are in front of a choir, you will probably have text in front of you and text is important because the syllables and the vowels and everything will have a different release as well. So what I recommend is to go to uh, one of my initial videos when I talk about the beat and well, what you will notice in that video is that what happens before the beat is just as important as what happens after the beat. So how you set up the beat point or the ictus point if you want to call it is just as important as, you, as how you come out, out of the beat point. For example, in uh, Beethoven Symphony Number no. 1, the first note that you have, you have a combination of different attacks and different releases. For example, you have a long note from the woodwinds, and at the same time you have pizzicatos from the strings. So how are you going to make sure that the woodwinds have enough air and enough air control to play out that note and play it as uh, uh, the way it's, it's intended, at the same time being together with the strings? Just like the example in uh, Beethoven number no. one, uh, there are tons of examples out there where you will have different uh, combination of lengths of notes and different attacks and different release, releases happening at the same time. Um, one more thing that you will want to remember is if the baton stops, the sound stops. You can use that as an advantage for your instruments or, uh, and the musicians that you're working with, but if you don't use it wisely, then it might become a uh, disadvantage. Feel free to comment down there and, uh, and you know, give us some examples of, of where you will have a different attack and different release and how, you came, how, how did you solve it in your conducting. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe.